In today's podcast, I'd like to talk about rectifiers and how we're going to use diodes to do that. Essentially, the AC signal that PG&E supplies, the average value is zero, so there's no DC component. And we like the AC for a couple of reasons. One, we can step up and step down the voltage and make it safer. And high voltage AC signals have less losses. Right, so we just lose less to heating. But in the end, all our devices need some kind of DC signal to run. And so that's the point of the rectifier. And we can use diodes to make the rectifiers. And so again, let's just review what a diode looked like. Essentially the IV curve, if we're in the reverse bias mode, then we get no current. Right? And reverse bias means point A is at a lower potential than point B. And in a forward bias direction for a very small cost and potential, we can pass unlimited current and forward bias is point A is higher than point B and we get the current flow from A to B. So let's look at rectifiers, a simple rectifier. So the circuit here, we have an AC signal hooked up to a transformer and then we have in series across the secondary a diode and a resistor. So essentially what we're going to measure on the secondary at point V1 is just the AC signal step down. If we measure the output voltage, we're only going to measure voltage when there's current flow, and current only flows when this is in the forward bias direction, or in this case when V1 is higher than zero. Okay, or V1 is higher than this point right here. So that's going to be the potential is higher. We get current across the resistor. Reverse bias mode, no current, no potential across the resistor. Potential across the resistor, so current, no current, no potential across the resistor. So that's the output. So if we look at the output, we can see there is an average value, right? We can figure it out. We can mathematically figure it out, but you can just see, hey, there's an average value, and so we've, we've got a DC value. Now, your device may not like to run on that. It's, it's a little not very smooth, but it at least has some average DC potential. Okay, well we can try and fix that. We can make a full wave rectifier, which we do the following. We can center tap the ground, and then we can put diodes at each end of the secondary coils. Right, and what we'll get at V1 and V2 is this. We'll get the positive half the secondary voltage single with a peak, and then uh, V2 will have half the secondary potential, but we'll have it out of phase. Okay, so this sort of, you can see, well, when V1 is positive, we're going to get current. We won't get current through this diode, and so the current will go through our output resistor. When we're in the reverse bias mode there, we get no current in the top diode, but then the second diode, we get current flowing through that diode, and so that current flows out and flows through the resistor. And so the output will essentially look like this. We'll catch half the wave from each of the diodes and we'll get current through the resistor. And again, so there's the output. You can see there's some kind of average value and we can calculate that or you can just kind of see it in there that the average value in this case is going to be a higher percentage of the peak voltage than for the half wave rectifier. Okay, so that's a basic way to kind of get some kind of DC voltage in a signal from an AC signal. So this brings us to the point of, well, this is exactly what a power supply is, and the goal of a power supply is to produce a steady, constant VDC. We typically characterize power supplies with a factor called the ripple, and so this is essentially the oscillation, the peak voltage of the oscillation, sort of divided by the average value. So let's see what that looks like. So below, I've plotted essentially what could be the output from a not very good power supply. There's some kind of average value. VDC is just the average value. And then there's some oscillation around that average value. So the signal is offset from zero because there's the average value. And so we can describe that as some voltage is VDC plus some voltage that's the AC part. In this example right here, the average value, or VDC, is 5 volts, and the oscillation around that 5 volts is really a 2-volt sine wave. So if we wanted to calculate the ripple in this case, we take the RMS value of 
the AC signal, which is the 2 volts times the sine function, and that's a sinusoidal, so the RMS value is just going to be V peak over the square root of 2, or in this case, 2 volts over the square root of 2, and that's all over the average value or the DC value, which is 5 volts. And so this example, this wave right here, would have a ripple of 0.28, which isn't very good. <clears throat> Typical power supplies have ripples on the order of 0 0.001. But that's a good power supply. So this would be a not very good power supply, and you can obviously you can see that you can see the ripple with your naked eye. So let's figure out how can we lower that ripple factor using our half wave rectifier. So here's a, our half wave rectifier that we saw before. The output was half the sine waves essentially. Well, how could we make that have less ripple? Well, if we add a capacitor. That capacitor will build up charge. It has to have the same potential across the capacitor as the resistor. It'll build up charge when we have current flowing. But then when we don't have current flowing, then that capacitor can act as a current source and current will still flow through the resistor with the charge that has been stored up in the capacitor. And that discharges with some time constant RC. And so you'll get the following curve, right? Which in the end, we can model as a triangular wave, right? And the importance of there is remember that the VRMS of a triangular wave is the peak voltage divided by the square root of three, not the square root of two like for a sine wave. So again, you can see that there's some average value, there's a DC value, and now there's less oscillation around that average value than we had if we just had the half wave rectifier. And so we can calculate that ripple theoretically or we can measure it in the lab and either way we can measure those figure out the ripple in this case it's smaller than before so we can also do the same thing with the full wave rectifier remember the full wave rectifier looked like this the output had essentially a positive part of the sine wave for each each half coming from the different diode the first one coming from the top diode the second P coming from the bottom diode, and so on and so forth. So that's our full wave rectifier. Again, we can play the same game. We can add a capacitor. The capacitor will charge up and then discharge when there's no current flowing. And so in this case, the time between no current flowing will be shorter. But again, we can see, if we look at the output, it looks a little bit like a triangular wave. We can model it as a triangular wave. And we can draw on the average value, and you can just see on this picture that the ripple is smaller. There's less variation around that average value. And again, we can theoretically figure out what that ripple is, or we can go in the lab and actually measure it if we're building this power supply. Okay, so that's, that'll get you part of the way there. And depending on your, what you want to do with that power supply, you may be done. But if you want to take it up one more level, you can use a Zener regulator. Okay, and so this looks like a kind of a complicated circuit, so let's break this down. There's essentially three elements. There's the transformer, there's a diode in series with a capacitor, and then there's a Zener diode in series with a, a, a resistor. So this first part, the part in blue, is really just the secondary voltage, right? The output at that end will just be the step-down signal we get from PG&E. The middle region is really just a half-wave rectifier, right? The voltage across that capacitor is essentially just going to give us the half-wave rectifier that we saw before. And then that green region is essentially a voltage regulator. It takes this something that has an average value and really just modulates it out, right? Because that Zener diode only has, it will only break down and allow current when there's five volts across it. So that means the load resistor will always see five volts independent of how much current there is. The other way to do that is with an integrated chip. So the chip does most of the work. So we just go buy some chip. We input some halfway rectified signal and on the output, we get some constant five volts. So that's typically how you'll do it in general, but we've kind of stepped our way to a reasonable power supply.